Hello viewers and welcome to our first episode of our new Sophia series. Sophia is a framework used with discord.js like we normally do in our tutorials. Uh, it's basically like Discord Cairo that we used to use in the old series but they're outdated now and we have now switched to Sophia which no one's made any tutorials for this so I'm going to be the first person and yeah. Uh, I'll show you guys basically from the start what you need to do. This is assuming that you know how to already get a bot. I right? make a bot in the Discord developer portal and that you have Node.js set up and everything. But we will make YouTube short videos on how to do them things eventually. So I've set up a project already. I haven't initialized it yet or anything. I've just made literally a directory called bot. So we're going to go ahead and initialize it. So to initialize a project, you type npm init. And we're actually going to go through the steps. So the package name, that's fine. Version's fine. Description. Entry point is what I wanted to change. I want to change it to dist forward slash index.js. And then that's it from there. Everything else is okay. So I've done that. So this is actually a TypeScript project. So we'll be using a tsconfig file. So we'll just go ahead and create that now. So it's tsconfig.json. And from here, obviously, it's a JSON file. So it'll be in this format. We want the compile compiler options. We want to set the module to CommonJS. Our target is going to be ES next. Our output directory is going to be dist. That's basically what we just defined for our main entry point of this project. Uh, lib, which is an array. We want ES next. ES next dot array. ES next async iterable. ES next in tool es next symbol and dom uh for anyone who isn't doesn't really want to watch this part of the video we've actually made a new source shell website which be in the description i've put the ts config on there so you can simply copy and paste the ts config from there uh inline source map we want to set that to true incremental to true inline sources true es module into drop true experimental decorators true emit decorator metadata true skip default lib check true Dip lib check through. All right, and then as for our source directory, we want to include src slash star star slash star or asterisk, whatever you call it. And we don't want to include our node modules. All right. So there's that. Now we can go ahead and create our src folder. And I'm now going to install the packages that we need. So we're going to need discord.js. And we're also going to need Sapphire Framework. So that's npmi at Sapphire forward slash framework. And now install the framework we're going to be using today. So that's done. Now we're going to go ahead and create a config.ts. This is where we're going to be storing our important variables like our bot token prefix. We'll go ahead and define them now. So we want to export them so we can use them in separate files. So we'll call this one bot token. And it's a string. Now your bot token, you want to keep it safe. Don't show it to anyone. 
Otherwise, people can take over your bot and do bad things of it, and you don't want that. And we'll also go ahead and do the prefix for this bot. Uh, it's a string. So I'm going to use exclamation mark as a prefix in this case. Alright, so that's saved. So that's our constants done. Uh, what we want to do next is make a client folder and within this folder we're going to have botclient.ts and in this file we're actually going to be extending the Sapphire client. This way in future videos we'll be able to add our own variables to the client or the container should I say in Sapphire's case and uh, we'll be able to like define a database and all that fun stuff. But this is just future proofing for our future videos. So we'll go ahead and import the Sapphire client, which we'll be extending. Uh, we're also going to need our bot prefix from the config file that we just defined, since this is where we define the bot's prefix. And we want bot client, which extends the Sapphire client. So we're going to have our constructor with our super and in our super is where we'll be defining our client options so intent i'm just going to add a bunch of them just for future proofing purposes so we will we'll be using guild messages i'm sure uh direct messages probably going to come into play for commands and guild members we'll also include some partials so we're going to probably want the channel partial, message, and guild member. Again, it's all for future proofing. Default prefix. So default prefix right here is a Sapphire prefix. It can be a string, so we'll add our bot prefix right here. Uh, we can set a custom presence for our bot. Uh, the presence basically it's status so uh, we'll say it to let's say idle and the activities we will make it as an array we will make it say watching uh you learn you learn typescript so the bot would say watching you learn typescript how fun is that so now what we're going to do from here is down here we're going to do a public override or the login method which takes a token we put a question mark here because it's possible a token doesn't get passed over return super dot login token that's all we want there and that's our extended client right here this video is proudly sponsored by HostingBot, a cheap, fast and reliable hosting company. They provide a selection of services to suit your hosting needs, including Discord bot hosting, servers and website hosting. Why should you use this company compared to other companies? That is because HostingBot does not oversell their resources and they own their own hardware in their own data centers. With our discount code, you can host your Discord bot or as cheap as under $2. Use the code MONOXT at checkout. If you're having doubts, just look at all these happy customers. So moving on, we're now going to create our index file. Oh, whoops. No, we don't want it in there. We want it inside the source directory. So index.ts. And this is where we're going to import our bot client that we just created along with our token from the config file so from here we now want to create a new instance for our bot client like so and then we can simply run oh, whoops client.login and pass through our bot token and this will log into the client so from here you don't need to do like the fancy stuff that we've done in the JavaScript series in the past where you have to make your own command handler and all that. Sapphire has all this built in for you. You don't have to mess around. It's all done for you. So 
like our event listeners, all we have to do is create a folder called listeners. Now you don't have to do this next part, but I like to do it for organization purposes. Our client listeners is just discord.js listeners. And the file name, the only important part is that the file name has to be the name of the event with .ts at the end. Casing matters here. So with discord.js, like the ready event and the guild member ad, it's all camel case. So the file has to be camel case too. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and make our ready.ts file. We want to import the listener class from the Sapphire framework along with client from discord.js. Now we're going to export class ready listener, we'll call it that, and that'll be extending the listener. Now people are going to probably question later on, well, why aren't you using decorators? Honestly, it's per personal preference. If you wish to use the decorators from Sophia, that is up to you. You'll have to do your own bit of research on it. It's not hard. But personal preference, I don't like to use decorators. So public constructor. They're going to have a context, which is a listener.context. And we're going to have options passed through, which is listener.options. And then a super with our context passed through and a new object, which is going to have our options passed through. And because we only want to run this event once, like we don't want it constantly listening, it only needs to listen once, we set once to true, like so. And now we want our run, run function, which basically anything inside here is going to execute when the client is ready and logged in. So in this case, we're going to just simply destructure the object. I just want the client's tag and ID, which is going to be from client.user. And then I just want to return. Instead of using console.log, the fire actually has a built-in logger, which you can access the way I just done it right here. And as you can see, it has different kind of loggers. We have debug errors. In this case, we're going to be using info because we're passing a bit of information. We successfully logged in as tag and we'll include user ID for template literals. So that's our ready event done. Now, likewise, we can make commands too. It just has to be inside a commands folder. Now, again, you don't have to do this next part. It's for organization purposes, but categories. I'm going to make a general category and within this, we're going to have the command name. So in my case, ping.ts. Oh, and before we move on, one more thing I would like to point out about this, this um, the listeners, you can define a name, but we default it to just the file name. It's already defaulted to that. Sophia's done that. So that's why we haven't. But if you do go with a different file name, then make sure you define the name as the event, in this case, ready. But it's in the file name. You don't need to do that unless you change the file name. Okay. All right. So we're going to, oh, we're going to import command from the Sapphire framework and message from discord.js. All right, so we're going to export class ping command is what we call it. And that's going to extend command is very similar to how we just done the listener, which is how you basically memorize how you use this framework. Again, you're going to pass through the context command.context and your options command.options with our super again being context. See how it's very similar to the listener. Now you got name, ping, aliases. This is additional aliases you can use. Uh, we to put latency. A description. See the latency in milliseconds. Uh, that's about, yeah, I have. Between the Discord API and server. 
This description will be useful later on for when we make a help command in a later episode. The full category is basically the category if you want to organize it. In my case, it is general. Oh, whoops, it's meant to be an array. General. And that's your category. And now, instead of having just run, it's going to be message run. Because later on, when Sapphire update their framework, there's going to be slash command support. Now, they've already added that support to the next version of Sapphire. But it's not the stable version. So we're using a stable version today simply because it's stable. So no one runs into any issues. So it's very simple to make a ping command. We just simply want to return a message. So we're going to send it to the current channel with Pong. And we just add a bit of format in there, back ticks. And we're going to have this.container.client. So this is how you access the client object. Or you can use message.client, but I prefer to use the container. But those are your options. And we'll have ms right here. So as simple as that. And again, you can always use message as well like this. Those are two options for you, but I prefer to use this.container. Now from here... I believe the bot should work. So fingers crossed, we'll compile it using the TSC command. This is going to create our dist folder with our JavaScript files. And now I, I can simply run node dot. Now this won't error out on me because earlier I defined the main entry point as dist slash index.js. So it's running that. Okay. So if I run it, so we got that, that's on the ready event from what we made earlier. So successfully logged in as tag ID. So it's successfully logged into Discord. Now, if we go over to Discord, we're going to our dedicated testing channel. We are gonna use exclamation mark ping. And it worked. It sent back the ping like we defined. And optionally, you can also use test monkey, like ping the bot and do ping and that's a prefix as well and remember what we defined earlier watching you learn typescript and the idle we've done that inside the client options so thank you guys for watching and i'll make another episode soon